Mm. How are we doing? Can't see chat right now. Give me a mo and we'll get cracking. Okay. There we go. Hang on. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Okay, give me a sec, guys, and we'll get cracking. Okay. Where is my live stream? I cannot see the chat. There we go. Oh, shit, you can guys can see a little bit of green screen bleed there. I'm going to quickly just adjust that. Hopefully that's a little bit better. How are we doing, guys? How are we doing? Josh, what's up, bro? Just give me a sec so I can hear myself. There we go. I'm good, man. I'm good. I hope you're well, man. George as well. How are you, bro? I'm just trying to get my... Honestly, YouTube Stream Studio tab. It's so bad. It doesn't actually load your analytics for like five minutes. It doesn't actually let you see it. It used to be fine. And then a few months ago, I don't know if it's just a me thing. But it just like won't show my stream feed. I have to go on the actual stream tab itself. <laughs> Dwayne, what's up, man? Trick is easy news? No, I haven't. I have not seen that. Am I? What have I missed here? Oh man, am I about to? I'm about to get a. What is this about to be? Uh. Oh, Drick is announcing a fight. Is he? A... Oh shit. Well, Drickus has accepted the fight. Yeah, I, that is not not concrete. Damn, all right. Fair enough. That's pretty cool. Mason, what's up, man? What's up? Jamal, KO Alex in round one. I do think he'll KO him. I just don't know if it'll be that early. Braining in London, bro. Get your coat. Yeah, it actually is right now. I know this is obviously this is obviously not actual rain, obviously, but it is raining outside my actual window right now. Standard procedure, man. Drickus will KO, is he with ground and pound? I think he'll beat him as well. If he's if he's a underdog, I'm 100% putting money down. 100%. How to sign your returns face to Acoustic PC in Perth? Yeah, I'm gonna have a. I'm 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 just reading that on Twitter now. After Dwayne said that, damn. I don't know how I missed that. That's pretty poor from me. Can my stream tab load, man? This is killing me. I'm sure it will come through. Sorry. Hmm. Awesome. Fluids. Steve Ursa will care Pantoja. Oh, it's a tough one, man. Pantoja's really old, despite being the champ, which is kind of why I'm leaning towards Ursa as well. Strickland just beat Izzy's ass, yet he gets to fight Drickus. Yeah, I don't believe he deserves the title shot, but I'm not like that mad about it. Yeah, maybe there's other people more deserving, but if they want to make the fight, they're going to make the fight. So, Vulcan outs 305 in Perth. Boris and Custer Highway think someone pulled out. Are you joking or are you being serious? Steve is so good. Yeah, underrated, I'd say. But then again, he's uh, we've barely seen him in the UFC, so it's hard to say. I I, I don't want to, you know, ride that train too too much, you know. A bit early for that. Volk Ilya Komain. Or in Australia. Is this so is this are these both for the Perth cards? I think it'll be a little bit too soon for Volk, personally. When it, actually maybe not. When is 305? When when would that be? Not for a while. So maybe it'd be fine, actually, yeah. You know what? I'm there for it. Fuck it. I'm I'm I like that. Volk Ilya. I feel like if they did Volk Ilya, surely that's got to be the co-main, right? Actually, no, you don't co-main Adesanya, do you? Or do you, though? It depends, because if Taporia, if they're going to really push Taporia, they'll make him main event. They have to. I feel like they have to, right? Could you imagine Ilya Taporia versus Volkanovski is the main event, the rematch? I think it might be. Honestly, I think they, I could see them putting Adesanya as the co-main. I don't know. Izzy is such a star, though. It's weird. Hmm. I don't know. I hope Volk takes more time off. Yeah, so do I. But we'll have to see. If Izzy does win, does three-time middleweight champ making the divisional GOAT? Thing is, I I always think about that, right? When you have guys who are like multiple-time champions, a lot of the times it's because they've lost their belt. So what's more impressive, right? You know, Jones has never lost a belt, technically. 
you know, but, but in the cage. So but that's obviously more impressive than becoming a two or three time champion. So I don't know. I don't know if you call it that. Is that as impressive as an accolade as people say? It's definitely impressive because I think winning your belt back is such a hard thing to do in this game. So yeah, it definitely warrants some merit. Ilya will knock Volk out again. I think so. Silver the guy 185. Yeah, undisputed. Volk's return. I got cooked one time for saying in one of my videos that arguably Adesanya is the middleweight goat. Like I didn't say he was. I just said arguably, which you can argue it. And uh, I got cooked for it. Obviously, obviously, I do think Silver is the goat, but there's there's an argument to be made. Volk's return should be this: Makayev Ortega, yeah, yeah, to Ilya retire. He's saying fighting Makayev. Am I am I being dumb? You saying that in that order? No, bro. Makayev's a flyweight, bro. Ariane, what's up, man? Good to see you, bro. Think that you see our Volk Ilya in Spain? Yeah, hundred percent. They have to. That's why I'm not sure about the three hundred five talk because. I don't think you could do it in Australia. Tapor is the A side now. He's the champ. You have to do it in Spain. And they are gonna put make him an absolute superstar. So you have to do it in Spain. At the Burnabout, bro. Biggest event ever. Be awesome. Chris Curtis or Allen? Brendan Allen? Is he fighting Chris Curtis? I'll go Brendan Allen. If 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 it is Brendan Allen, he's fine. Jones is the GOAT. Depends on what metric though. GSP is GOAT. Ah, it's tough, man. It's tough. There's I mean, realistically, you could say any of them. You could say any of them. I mean, it's either Jones, GSP, or DJ. You know, you, you you could debate that all the time. But man, listen, I I'm tired of having that conversation because let's be honest, they're all three incredible mixed martial artists, and that's probably where I'd leave it. You know, I don't like debating that. I appreciate their greatness, man, because realistically, they're all out of the game now or close enough to it. So DJ's not got many fights left, if any. Might be half retired. Jones has probably got one or two in him, and that's it. I'm cooked. I'm always cooked, man. You mean Evloev? Yeah. Makes sense. I think Evloev is a little bit of a step down for him. I think we have to be the top five guy. Is Evloev even top five? Did he move to top five after beating Allen? I don't know. Damn, we've got 15 people in here. We love it, boys. Thank you. Hey, Aiko, what's up, bro? Good to see you again. I like that energy, man. Drones multiple PED files. Talks about... Uh, oh, pet. Hang on. Pause. That sounds suspect, Josh. Takes him out of the goat talks. Yeah, I mean, that's the debate, isn't it, really? You know, where they talk about the steroids. And I, I almost feel like the problem is with the UFC, it's almost so like scorched earth because most of the guys, you know, that's the one one of the things that the Diaz bro has always said that everyone's on steroids. They're not really wrong. Pretty much everybody was and probably still is. So I don't know. I, I, I definitely think there's some merit in that, though. Joe's did lose his belt in the cage, though. Did he? Am I crazy? No, he didn't, right? Am I, uh, am I dumb? I don't know. No, he only got stripped, though. He didn't lose it in the cage, right? He's never lost it in the cage. Unless I'm wrong. I might be, might be completely wrong here. So he did the video on the entire show of UFC. I suggested it to you on streams back. Was that one of those streams where I was asking for ideas? I'm not surprised. There you go, man. Well, it took me a fucking while to make, so I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <clears throat> I was really proud of it, so I hope you did enjoy it. It's uh, doing okay. Not performing as well as I'd hoped, but it's still chugging along, and I have a good feeling it's going to pick up at some point, so I'm, I'm not losing hope. Reyes fight? Yeah, well, he didn't lose it, though, did he? As much as everyone wants to say that, and I agree, I thought Reyes won that fight, you know, and still was what was said, bro. Undefeated at lightweight? Who? Who am I talking about here? Or a light, light heavyweight are you talking about? Exam went pretty well. Pretty sure you're blessed. No, that's good, man. That's good. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad my, my blessing at the end of that stream, the other stream, uh, helped you out. I'm glad you had a good time. Well, as good of a, as good, as good of a time as you can have while uh, doing an exams. I don't miss them. I didn't even do my college exams when I was in college. Well, sixth form, at school, you know, same thing. I was like, nah, it was in COVID. First time, first like outbreak of COVID and they shut everything down. Didn't even end up doing them. So, and now I'm doing YouTube. So it wouldn't have mattered anyway. <laughs> It's not the end of the world. If it doesn't go well, it's not the end of the world. I'll say that. 300 this Friday or the next? It's next week. And sorry, it's the week after. It's on the 13th, but I'm putting it out the week before. So it'll come out on Friday. What's the day today? Tuesday? It's Tuesday today. It'll come out on Friday. And then it's, it's on Saturday. So it'll be on Saturday night. Favorite subject as a kid? I don't know, you know. I don't know. I mean, my favorite subject in like when I was in later school, like in college and that was, I did film studies. I quite enjoyed that. Just talking about film. 
Um, I don't know. Never really enjoyed anything too much, to be honest. Thumbnail might be working against you a bit. I know what you're saying. I disagree. I mean, I do, and I, I agree, and I disagree. It's meant to look like that because it's. <sighs> you know, if you've seen the, the series before, the uh, the history of the entire world. There's a bunch of ones like that on different areas, like the Premier League football, F1, all of that stuff. Like, it has to, for me, it has to fit that format. I do get what you're saying, though. I might change it at some point. I don't know. For video for Friday, I, it'll be Casual's Guide to 300. I started editing it now, earlier today. So, wrote it yesterday, recorded it, and edited it, started editing today. So, that'll be out on Friday. Looking forward to it. Got some cool shit coming up. I, if you can, guys, if you have any ideas, hit me with them, man. I could use them. Damn, this lighting is not the one. I need to, I need to pan this up. Hold up. Let's do some tinkering real quick. How's that looking? Hmm. I'm just tinkering a bit. Oh, no. Too dark. Too bright. Ah, that will do. Pretty much the same. Whatever. All hail Queen Wei Lee. Kyle, yeah, I think she's going to get it done pretty dominantly, if you had to ask me. Pretty dominantly. Are you into watching, like, new series and stuff? Hmm. Not really. I'm not really a TV guy. It's difficult for me to get into. But I'm going to keep that up because that's going to... Weirdly, this backlight from my computer actually helps, so I'm going to have that there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I trained, Carlo, I trained jiu-jitsu, but I've been out of the game for a little while now, so, because of medical shit. I will get back on the mat soon, I really, really, really miss it, especially since all my old friends from uni are, are just getting way better, and it gets on my nerves, because I want to I, I get back into it and just, you know, strangle some people in the, in the politest terms. I just miss it, man, I miss it a lot, but all in good time, we'll get there. At the moment, we're just getting in the gym and getting in shape, and then we'll be back in the, back on the mats at some point. Bazo on a pack on FIFA, give me blessings. No, don't play ultimate team. That, I, that was literally, I had no life playing FIFA 23 at university and I regret everything. It just made me hate myself. Um, I only play pro clubs on 24, so don't don't play ultimate team. It's it's awful. Favorite performance of all time in MMA? Ooh, great question. I think, I mean, immediately the first one that comes to mind is Volkanovski versus Max Holloway 3. I think that's just such a perfect performance. There's there's plenty though you could pick. There's just so many. I mean Max Holloway against Cater's up there. You know, that's just that's just unbelievable. There's so many. That'd be one of them though. Aben, here to cause some uh, cause some trouble, I imagine. Hope you're well, bro. Who's my GOAT? Could be anyone, man. I mean, for me, I want to say DG. I always say this as a model champion, as a sort of everything that represents a champion, so inside and out of the cage and being a human being, I have to say DJ, obviously. In terms of just pure skill. Probably still DJ, but in terms of accolades, you have to go John Jones, I feel. Over at performance of all time, Cody Nochin versus Chris. Nah, hearing a lot of talk about that. That's a load of bullshit. It's a great performance. Whatever, it was a close round. A couple of rounds were close. I don't care. Overrated performance, though. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's... I mean, you can't really say many are too overrated. It's a difficult one. I don't know. TV and movie discussion channel on the Discord now. Shit, shit, I forgot. You know, I could do it right now. I'll literally do it for you right now. So just to make you happy, bro. There you go. It's up there. You should be able to see that. I don't think there's any permissions for it, so you could see it. Bro's mad I didn't say Eddie versus Connor. That's not overrated, though. Hell no. Garbrandt Cruz. Uh, yeah, I, I see what I'm seeing. I'm hearing a load of chat about it this week. I keep seeing that. How it was an overrated performance. No, it wasn't, man. I mean, Eddie, Eddie Corner is a great performance. That's not overrated at all, man. You can't say that's an overrated performance. I think that's crazy talk. Kwasim, what's up, man? Good to see you, bro. If you can, by the way, boys, hit a like, hit the like button on the stream. That would be uh, awesome. It means more people would just be flowing in here. Push. It will just gradually push that stream out to a few more people. So if you don't mind, that would be greatly appreciated. But yeah, I mean, overrated performances. I don't know. Just throw some in the chat and I'll, and I'll have a little think. I don't know. I'm weirdly, my brain's just drawing blanks right now. I can't lie. Also, if you guys have any video ideas as well, you know I'm always open to it. 
always open to it. I'm uh, trying to think of something for in the, in the, fu- in the future in a couple of weeks to do. So, And I haven't really given it too much thought. So if you have any ideas, I might do the seven heavenly virtues. So I'll probably do that in a couple of weeks, which is like the opposite of the seven deadly sins one because that one did quite well. Or I'll do another seven deadly sins one. I don't know. Because I quite enjoyed making those. Um, Connor Eddie, Eddie is the best performance in recent MMA history, Amo. Only ones I can think of close are Vo- Volks versus Max 3 and Sean versus Chio 2. Yeah, great shout. Obviously, people are going to say recency bias, but I don't think it's even that. I think in a few years, we'll be talking about that performance as one of the best. I think that's a great shout. Hmm. Yeah, it depends what you want to say, because if you can put a clinic on someone for five rounds, is that more of like more dominant than knocking them out in like two or three? You know what I mean? So there's a different ways you can go with that. I mean... Connor Eddie, I think when you when you take into account the spectacle of it, what it meant, I feel like you have to go with it, don't you, realistically? Like the spectacle, you know, the first man to become a double champ, you know, global superstar, you know, all of that rinded on him and he just did that. You know, he has to be up there. Tyson Jake Paul, yeah, I agree. Disgraceful as hell, man. It's a, it's a bit of a piss take, to be honest. I, I mean, I said this, I think Jake Paul's going to knock him out um, or Mike Tyson's corner is just going to throw the towel in. It's just ridiculous. I think it's an absurd... Hey, they're both going to get paid like fucking crazy amount of money, so. Go eat chicken now. What does that mean? Is that Juan or I'm assuming you've misspelled your name? Or Hassan, Carrillo? What, what do you mean by go and eat chicken? In fairness, I've got a chicken pie to have later, so you, you're actually kind of right there. Sean versus Chia was the most dominant in this I've ever seen. Yeah, Chin of Granite. Well, you say that, but right at the last second, he did get caught with that body shot. And honestly, I reckon if you give that 30 seconds, Chia wins that fight. I don't think that's crazy to say. Sean was on the floor the moment that bell rang. I don't know, man. Happy Tyson is getting back. Why is he putting himself on the line? Because he wants to get paid, bro. It's as simple as that. There's no other reason. Why else would he risk that? He's always talked about he doesn't enjoy boxing anymore. <laughs> Let's be honest. He wants pay. He wants the pay. He wants the paycheck. That's it. Casual guide to MMA strike types. What is a teep and why is it different from front kick? I'm not knowledgeable enough on it. That's the problem. <laughs> if I was uh, experienced in it, I would, but I'm not, so I won't. Like that's the reality of the situation. I can't sit here and say I know everything there is to know about striking because I don't. I'm a layman in in every sense of the word to the actual doing it. So I I don't think I can offer that. I get what you're saying though. Like, I like to storytell, and I, I, you know, in terms of the technical analysis, there's only so much I can do, right? It, it's surface level. Um, I mean, jiu-jitsu, obviously, I could talk a little bit more. If buts and maybes, yeah, exactly, man. Sean won at the end of the day. What about my jiu-jitsu? I mean, I train no gi, so I don't, we don't do belts, but I don't know. I'm probably not far off a blue belt. Um, I, I've had to ballpark. I'm probably a little bit more experienced than I was, I reckon I was around a blue belt level. I don't, again, I don't want to push big myself up like that because you know you shouldn't be doing that but i mean i was training on and off for about two years so i i reckon close enough to blue belt but there was again there was some stuff i just wasn't very good at so and you to be a blue belt you need to be you need to have a good understanding of the fundamentals how many times do i have to say this the only reason chio caught sean like that is because there was a few seconds left and went for it well i mean you say he went for it he landed sure he didn't go for it in the last few seconds of the fight but if he lands the shot he lands the shot and it clearly hurt sean a lot I don't know what you want me to say. It hit him and it hurt. Since you're indulging a soy sport BJJ, talk about casual guy to BJJ subs. I feel like that's not something anyone needs to know. I mean, it's pretty pretty standard procedure, you know? I don't know. Like, who wants to hear, oh, this is what a rear naked choke is. This is what a guillotine, this is what a das is, you know? This is what an arm bar is. This is what an oma plata, a goga plata, you know? <laughs> it's... No one... I don't think really people... I mean, you, I guess I could do, like, the most iconic ones of each submission. That's a good idea. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. That's a good shout, actually. The most iconic of each submission. I like that. I've had, I'll, I'll write that down. I like that. I'm not saying I'll do it, but you never know. MMA promotion other than UFC, I'd say one. Yeah, one FC. I mean, objectively, one FC is probably the best in terms of size, scale, and production. I actually like a lot of what PFL are doing, but they just make some frustrating decisions. But yeah, it's got to be one. Predictions for ADCC. I'm not too in... Honestly, mate, I'm not too in, like, touch with competitive jiu-jitsu personally i don't really enjoy watching it too much so i don't know who's fighting or who's competing let me have a look events upcoming events what's happening is it just a uh, in the world championships what's happening i'm oh, gordon ryan's obviously isn't he? he's gonna be in there i mean you have to say gordon ryan he's like the goat isn't he so 
Cash just wants to know. That's true. I still have no idea what Goga Plata Noma Plata is, especially don't when it's being set up. Well, I'll tell you right now, you'll never fucking see a Goga Plata in the UFC probably ever because they're so... I mean, you might. I'm sure one will eventually happen, but they're so rare. The only one I can think of is not in the UFC. I think it was in Pride. Was it in Pride? I don't even know. Nate Diaz versus... Was it... It wasn't Sakuraba, was it? I'm getting completely... Or Horiguchi or something? Um, Nick, Nick Diaz, I mean, not Nate. He's pulled off a Goga Plata before. It's basically when you choke them out with your shin in your own guard. It's really, really difficult to pull off. I mean, we had a buggy choke in the Contender Series the other day. Oh, no, on Cage Warriors, which is insane. Uh, I'm looking for it. Who was it? Really early. Jesus, he's got a load of fights. Was it Nick Diaz or am I tripping? The, the, he definitely did, right? I'm trying to find it right now. Am I, am I just making this up? Yeah, Takanori Gomi it was. It, uh, Pride, yeah, yeah. For some reason, it's not on his record. I don't know why. Maybe I missed it. Want well, to put some on some phenomenal kickboxing and Muay Thai fights? Yeah, I know. They're great. And Jiu-Jitsu as well. They got Mikey Musemi in there. He's he's a killer, man. You can spot insanely rapidly on Edwards' is. <laughs> There's some horrendous bait here. At least people talk about how boring Balao is a meme. No one's about to say Leon is, unless it's a fight. Most of the champion. I disagree. I think Leon's really entertaining to watch because he's technically so high level, personally. I really enjoy watching Leon fight. And obviously, I'm biased as fuck because I'm English. But, hey. Did you catch Vidal Riley's most recent fight? No, I saw he won. Yeah, I mean, obviously, he's got a lot of hype around him. He's, he's good. He's good. Again, I'm not, like... I don't claim to be versed on boxing too much, so I won't... I won't chat too much about boxing. Ban? Ban who, Pinaldo? I saw your comment on the video, by the way. Thank you. Predictions for Urseg. Oh, DJ versus Pantoja. You go DJ, don't you? They're both quite old. In fact, I'm pretty sure that they're the same age, right? Isn't that wild to say? Well, they're close enough, right? Oh, no. My mass is 37. Okay. So he's two years older than me. Casual guide to BJJ submissions will be worth it, especially when you explain how it can be set up. Yeah, I mean, I won't be able to explain all of them. I don't really know the setup for a Goga Plata because <laughs> it's quite a hard submission to pull off. But it's also really difficult to actually describe without showing it. I'm not very good. That's a difficult thing to do. That's what makes a good coach. Being able to explain stuff like that concisely and clearly whilst actually drilling it is, is a difficult thing to do. And I probably even start waffling about it. I can't lie. I don't think I'm not very good at explaining submissions. I'd be like, no, yeah, you do this and then you do that and that. And I just, I'd fuck it up. Got your browser sit video? Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. How does the equal choke work? Didn't get a good look at it when Volker pulled it off against Taito Ivasa. It's like, <laughs> it's quite a funny one because in jiu-jitsu, I mean, the reason, this is also the reason you don't see it in MMA at all is because in jiu-jitsu, it only really works against uh, a guy who's been training for the first week. And like, as soon as you get, once you get tapped to an Ezekiel, that's why I always say, once you get tapped by an Ezekiel, you never get tapped by it again because it's the easiest way to defend against. You just basically tuck your chin and it's really difficult to get through. It's basically just the uh, the, 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 press, the pressure of the forearm against the uh, against the neck uh, in mount. It's pretty simple as that. And there's, you sort of lock up with your other arm, but it's, it's, all, it's just pressure in your forearm onto the chin, essentially. Or not onto the chin, onto the neck. Pretty simple submission, but it rarely ever works. My mouse would be a guy to break the flyweight to welterweight 35 curse. Yeah, probably. I w it wouldn't surprise me. He still looks good, even in his recent performances in one, uh, you know, obviously recent, quote unquote, but he looked good, man. So you never know. You never know. Yeah, and Ezekiel Choke is rare. I mean, Olenik was one who pulled one off not that long ago. And then obviously, as you said, Volkov against Tuivasa. It's rare to see it because it is such a simple submission. But that can kind of work in your favor because no one expects it, you know, especially these high-level guys. You don't expect them to whip out the Ezekiel choke because it's like, it's kind of a foregone conclusion that you're going to defend it. So I guess you can almost get caught off guard by it as a result. Interviewed Bobby Knuckles recently. Yeah, I saw it. I didn't watch it. I saw him premiering it on, uh, on YouTube. His channel's doing crazy as well. Crazy numbers. Mixed rules fight between TJ and Musemi. Nah. I mean, yeah, but I feel like you'd have to do jujitsu first. You just would, because I feel like it's much more one-sided in that in the other regard. If you put it at MMA first, it's not even going to be close. Von Flew is equal choke. So many you can talk about. Yeah, Von Flew is one of my favorites because it's it, it's also kind of similar to Ezekiel in a way that you can catch it on a lot of people who aren't familiar. 
it's such a good submission because basically if, if you've got a guy holding onto a guillotine, as soon as you, you, you they get, it gets to the mat and you're losing the guillotine and if they pass you, if they pass your guard in any capacity and they're like half guard or side control, if they get to side control and you're still holding on the guillotine from bottom, death sentence, bro. You've got to let go. So basically you have to let go of the guillotine essentially. That's what a lot of white belts do because they think, oh, I'm still going to hold onto the neck because it's kind of instinctual, right? You want to see if you can get a sub. And if the guy you're guillotining is on side control, all they got to do is post up on their feet and they just drive their shoulder into your neck and you're tapping. You're asleep in like five seconds to that shit. That's one of my favorite submissions because it's so sneaky and it comes on so quickly. One of the guys I know, actually, he competed and he got he got slept by a, a Von Flu choke. So there you go. Great submission, though. It's one of my favorites. Doesn't usually happen in the UFC too much, but I think we've seen a few of them recently. There was one in the women's divisions not that long ago. Experiencing a Von Flu and an Anaconda... Even doing it for six months, forget this. I mean, they're completely different subs. Anaconda is kind of like a DAS, sort of. As, as, as they're sim I say it's kind of like a DAS. It, it is and it isn't. Like I mean, I, the setup's kind of similar, but the actual finish is different because you change grip. When you go for a when you go for an Anaconda, you switch your grip, and you sort of I don't know how to explain it. Again, I'm not really I can't really explain it without actually doing it. Um, but their Von Flues are completely different submission. DAS, I love that. I'm a big DAS fan. Dice Track Van is so nice to lock up. As psychopathic as that sounds, it's a great sub. So far, grapplers in the UFC. Charles Oliveira is number one. So depends which avenue you're going. I mean, I'd say Damian Meyer. Not now, though. I don't know. Off the top of my head. Throw some names at me. So, I mean, I'm not good at this. <laughs> Anaconda and Das. Yeah, I, I, I wish I, I... I can't really explain it without showing it. <laughs> I mean, the setup is slightly different. It's similar. I'm not very good. I never really get anacondas, to be honest. Darces I get more often. You can set, both set them up from like a sprawl, but I think anaconda's better for that because you have to roll, essentially. You do a sort of gator roll and then switch your grip. I'm not very good at it, though, so I don't really... I don't. I never really go for them. Darces are good, though. You can get them from anywhere, really. Side control is, is, is the general way I go to. Damien retired? I don't actually know. I think he is, right? Maybe I'm wrong there. How do you feel Zortega is a grappler? He's elite, man. He's one of the best jiu-jitsu... Yeah, that's a good name, actually. Great jiu-jitsu practitioner, man. I mean, <laughs> you can't say he isn't good. He's very good. He nearly tapped Volkanovski. You know, to spring that mounted guillotine like that, that requires years of experience just to have that instinct, that grappler's instinct to pull off that submission. So, yeah, he's very good. One of the great pure jiu-jitsu artists, I think, out there right now. Very good at what he does. Obviously, his striking leaves a little, more, little bit more to be desired. His defense more than anything. But yeah, in terms of pure jiu-jitsu, he's one of the best, 100%. Love watching him grapple, man. Because he's one of those guys that's always dangerous. They're my favorites. Guys who are always dangerous off their backs, and they're active. Who play, guys who have an active guard, particularly in MMA, who are willing to just do work on their back rather than just be content and look for a way to get up. Guys who will look for those submissions or make it uncomfortable at all times. Guys like Charles Oliveira is a perfect example, as I said. They're, they're, they're so fun to watch. Makes watching, you know, grappling way more exciting when in, in in the UFC in particular when it goes to the ground. But again, it's all personal preference, really. Wrestler Ortega is a mythical fighter, man. Rolled his ankle, got dropped twice in six minutes and tapped out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, crazy comeback, wasn't it? I predicted Ortega because of the wrestling grappling. Yeah, yeah, he is very good. He's dangerous off his back, but he's pretty one-dimensional and he's not, he can't, Defend wrestling very well at all. Vulcan obviously won something else that fight. Got to have a guillotine. Got to have a triangle back to back. Yeah, that's probably that round three. If it's not, if I'm not mistaken, if it was the third round, that's probably my favorite round of MMA ever. Honestly, that is that or I think it was round four in Teixeira versus Prohachka. One of those rounds is just incredible. I love that. Those two fights are awesome. But yeah, that third round in between Ortega and Volkanovski, man, incredible. You know, gets out the guillotine, which no one else would do, really. I don't think there's another man alive who would have survived that guillotine. And then gets out of that, comes back, starts beating on Ortega, who then whips out the triangle, which was a tight triangle, can I just say. And, yeah, gets out of that and starts wailing on him. Awesome, man. Well, Ilya versus Ortega in a grappling match. Ortega beats him. 100%. Just jujitsu? Yeah, Ortega. 100% Ortega. Ortega is a beast. <laughs> in pure grappling, Ortega would be, would be him up, man. I, I do think so. And that's no disrespect to Ilya. I think he's phenomenal. But Ortega is a much more of a pure jiu-jitsu specialist. So, yeah, I'd have to go with him. 
Very, very, very good. Underrated, I'd say. I know as crazy as that sounds, I feel like just people don't give him the plaudits he deserves in that regard. He is so good on the mat. Yeah, ah, oh, man. I, all this talk about jiu-jitsu is making me mad, man. I miss it. I really miss it a lot. Does Zoltika beat everyone in Florida to well away? I think so, especially not after a weight cut. Are you talking in MMA? Are you talking about jiu-jitsu? In jiu-jitsu, I'd say most of them, yeah. I mean, if you just, obviously, if you're just speaking hypothetically, I guess so. Well, I don't know. There are probably some glaring names I'm missing. Oh, to well away? No, not to well away. What am I talking about? Charles Oliveira, I think, would, would probably beat him. Because the size difference is, is, is there as well. and Obviously, Ortega's a big featherweight too, to be fair. Hmm. And obviously, you've got Gilbert Burns at welterweight. I don't know. There's a lot of good names. I probably wouldn't say so. Not not to welterweight. Flyweight to featherweight, I think so. But I don't think past that. I mean, Ortega was a beast coming through, though. That knockout over uh, Cub Swanson. That's an awesome knockout. And the one over Frankie Edgar as well. No, yes, right. Sorry, he subbed. He guillotined Cub Swanson. He uppercutted Frankie Edgar. That's it, man. Thoughts on Strickland, Usman 2 being rumoured? I mean, sure. I'm there for it, I guess. You know, I wanted Usman Whitaker personally, but we're getting Whitaker Shemaev, so... Um, I guess it makes sense, doesn't it, really? It looks like Drickus has got a fight booked. I don't think it makes sense to put Usman or Strickland against either of them. So, yeah, why not? Strickland Usman 2 makes sense. Daddy de Bronx, Islam, Pantoja, Ortega, me. No, nah, mate, I'd get, I'd get my ass handed to me, man. <laughs> I'm okay. I, I'm not a great... I'm like a, Again, but in the grand scheme of things, my experience is rudimentary. And there's a different level. And I've, like, even rolling with a black belt is... I said this on the podcast before, it's probably the most humbling experience you could ever go through because even though you expect what's going to happen, you know you're going to lose, it still feels so just, you still feel so powerless. And it's even worse when, you, when, you're, when you're, you've had some experience as well. Like even for me with two years experience, I rolled when I had like a one, set, one sort of one-off session in September at a random open mat at a gym near me. Um, I was rolling with one of their coaches and, you know, he just, it, I could do nothing to him. I could do like literally nothing to him, man. So, it's a different experience. And that was just to a black belt. Like, obviously, they could, but you were talking UFC caliber grapplers. That's, different, that's a different ball game. It's crazy. Ilya Kairos Ortega, I think he definitely has a good chance. In MMA, yeah. Is he the dog did love Jose getting undeserved title shot? So I'm hearing. Someone mentioned it in chat earlier. Shrill and Costa will be a fun build up. Yeah, that would be fun, actually. That's a great shout. I like that, actually. I, maybe I'll take that back. Maybe I'll do Shrill and Costa. Islam is number one wrestler. Wrestling, yeah, hundred percent. Number one as well. Nah, not in grappling. I think not. His submission threat is good, but I think that's just better, guys. Bronx number one in grappling. Yeah, I think so. Stuff that absolutely everything Bryce had. Who uh, Taporia? Yeah, but I think a lot of that is just the fact that Taporia is so dangerous on the feet. Do you know what I mean? He was able to keep him there. But no, that that is credit to him though. I do think Taporia is actually a very good grappler. I just think. It's talking pure grappling. Ortega would beat him, personally. You know, we could go in circles on that, but. <laughs> Islam over Jones as a wrestler. Yeah, 100%. Jones is very good because he's good everywhere. That what makes, that's what makes him elite. That's what makes him one of the best. It's because he's good. He's great everywhere. Islam is just better at that aspect. In fact, Islam is rapidly becoming one of the most well-rounded we've ever seen. And I don't think that's hyperbolic at all. At all. I think on the feet, he is seriously dangerous. That's what makes him, I think, actually a better mixed martial artist than Khabib ever was. Because Khabib's striking was, wasn't was conventionally good, but it was good in what it allowed him to do. He had built a style which allowed him to wrestle heavily, as he should be doing, but remain very defensively responsible. His weird erratic style, it worked for him. But conventionally, as a mixed martial artist, I think Mahachev is a far better, far better, far more well-rounded. I mean, who would even say Pantoja is over Islam in grappling specifically? Um, I don't know. I think they're both very good. It depends what you're really looking for. When you say grappling, are you talking in wrestling, pure submission threat, both? You know, there's a lot of lot of factors there, man. Thoughts on proper 12 is pre-workout. <laughs> I mean, I just drink protein shakes, man. I've been on that my protein. This is what I've been having. Peach tea flavored, just protein powder. 
I just put that in there, and then that's 20 grams of protein right there. Mm. That and usually a cup of coffee, but that's that's been sitting on my desk for like the whole day. So there you go. I'm a big coffee fan beforehand. So I usually have a coffee before I work out, and then uh, and then we get on the uh, we get on the protein shake. If you even want to call it a shake, I don't. I never like protein smoothies because they're so thick, bro, and I just feel bloated as hell. So I prefer just a scoop of protein powder in some water, and we're good. We're good to go. That's how we roll. I just shuffle my music, man. What is this? Got Frank Sinatra on shuffle. It's not. It's not the mood right now. Not the mood. All right, that will. There we go. Bang. Oh shit. There we go. We're good. What's good, Julio? Man, it's been a while. I haven't seen you in a little bit. I hope you're good, man. Thanks for stopping by, bro. Thank you for stopping by. Frank Sanchez is always the mood. Yeah, he is good, man. As a human being, I'm not so sure. Actually, maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know. That's why I've heard some dodgy things about him. But who isn't dodgy in this day and age, eh? That's not sus, actually. That sounds sus. Everyone's got skeletons, is my point. I'm out of ideas for fights. What ones can I do on UFC 4? Because I don't have a PS5 yet, so I can't do UFC 5. I don't know. I can't even remember who's on UFC 4. It's CM Punk's on UFC 4, right? He is. Just throw him against Ngarnu on... on uh, I know. My favorite thing to do, what I always love doing on the UFC games, you can't do it anymore because they removed Ngarnu, man. But <laughs> my favorite thing to do is I, I, I'd play as John Dodson on Legendary AI. I'd play as John Dodson, Legendary AI against Ngarnu, and you have to win. It's very fun. <laughs> Frank Sinatra specifically, it's got to be my way, bro. That's the classic. That's, that's the New Year's karaoke banger for me. Hopper MMA. Yeah, I do, man. I don't watch his stuff, but he's he's doing pretty well, isn't he? He's kind of in that same vein as like Bedtime, isn't he? Bedtime MMA. Again, I don't watch these guys because I don't really care for tier list shit too much. And obviously, I'm surrounded by MMA all the time, so I don't watch a lot of content creators anyway. But yeah, I, I know who he is. Yeah, he's doing well, man. I Patrick Guyver put out a new video on Steven Seagal for April Fool's Day, which I thought was class. I, uh, I was a big fan of that. It has to be said. How many users that on now? Let's have a look. 92k. Master Bullshido, yeah. <laughs> Could do Joe Dane on UC3. Yeah, I forgot. You play as Rogan on 3. You can't change to it. Bedtime, I only know Steve Ersig. Is that a joke I don't understand? Is that a bedtime MMA joke I don't get? Do you ever play Fallout? Yeah, man. Uh, I played 3. I played 4. Um, they're okay. They're not my favorites, man. Four, I struggled to click with. I liked it, but I didn't love it. You know what I mean? I prefer Skyrim. Be Bethesda games have gone down the hill. Starfield is a steamy pile of dog shit. So <laughs> I tried that out. I was like, there's no way this game came out in 2024 or 2023. It's awful. So, so dated. You heard that you can't sing my way at karaoke in Thailand? Can you not? Why is that? Is it really? Is it something? Is it some sort of like, I don't know like reference to the Vietnam War or something? Or did they play it or something? Go up every division versus the second greatest. That's a good shout, yeah. New Vegas the best. Yeah, I hear a lot of good things. I just don't know if I'd like it because I've played so... I, I'm so sick of Bethesda games now because they're all just the same. I've been playing a lot of Stardew Valley recently. Great game. Don't... You can call it soy all you want, but it's awesome. And I, I'll die on that hill. <laughs> I will die on that hill. Stardew Valley, Slay the Spire, bit of Counter Strike. Um, I nearly finished another Elden Ring playthrough. That game's great, uh, mainly because the DLC is coming out, and I'm fucking hyped. <laughs> I'm so hyped for that. I fucking love Dark Souls, so good. Early Fallout is Obsidian, not Bethesda. Oh yeah, the OG ones though. I mean, like when I think Fallout, I think like three and onwards. But yeah, you're right. You're right. I haven't played the originals. Quite old for me. <laughs> bit before my time then again i play a lot of old games so i guess that's not really an excuse garn versus tom or curtis versus tom um yeah of course i'd yeah i agree i would want john versus tom but yeah i'd probably say in terms of like legacy i'd say i want tom to fight curtis first just to get that that win back if you want to quote unquote say that but spectacle and everything on a like a london card you have to go cyril garn man it just has the hype around it doesn't it two great strikers i'm there for that 
I, I'd probably pick the former, yeah. But, listen, beggars can't be choosers. I'd take either. I, I mean, I wouldn't even take either, man. I mean, I would. But I just want John versus Tom, as I said. But we ain't. We all know we're not getting it, man. And we're going to have to have Tom defending his interim belt. And then there's just forever going to be question marks about whether the hell that counts as a title defense, which is stupid. Because it should do. And I'd say it does. So stupid, man. Garn versus Tom in September. France card. Yeah. Has that been confirmed? They're doing a France card in September? I think that's a little bit of a too late of a layoff for Tom, man. I think he wants to get in there before that. I think, to be honest, I think he'll be on the Manchester card in July. I think there's no way he won't be on that. I think we'll we'll find out what that is in a month in the, over the next month. I think it will probably be Garn or Blades, as, as you said, Ariane. Leon Belau in England. Yeah, no, I think they'll do both of those fights on the Manchester card. I think that, the main and co-main, I think they'll stack it with that. I hope they do that. That makes perfect sense. Oh, man, I, I feel like I have to get tickets if that happens, man. I mean, seeing both guys fight live was already a privilege, but man, it would be awesome to watch to watch them. them. Especially Tom now as a champ. Oh, I'd love to see that. I'm just blessed that I went to that Volkov Aspinall card, man, because I think that genuinely is the best fight night in history, and I don't even think that's like a bias thing. I think you could objectively say that London card, Aspinall Volkov, if you go through it, is probably the best fight night we've ever had. Awesome. Sean tweeted something about fighting in September. Yeah, I saw. Sean's just been pissing me off recently, man. I mean, he's polarizing as is, but he's just so hypocritical, Strickland. I mean, talking about he doesn't care about the belt and this and that, yet he's crying about if he doesn't get the shot, he's going to boxing. It's just like the most hypocritical shit. If you didn't care about the belt, you wouldn't be rambling every five minutes on Twitter about it. How's it going, Leo? Pete, man, I'm good. Good to see you, bro. Good to see you. Hope you're well, bro. Gone fights at Aspinall, you would have fought maybe the best three MMA heavyweights in the world. Yeah. Jones and Garnu Aspinall, I'd agree. Talking about Sean O'Malley, not Strickland. Oh, no, I didn't see that. But that's a good turnaround for him, I think. Makes sense. A few months, yeah. Can take his time off, enjoy, get in camp. I like that. I mean, who do you pit him against? Marab, obviously, it has to be. And I actually think Sean beats him. And I'm a, I am a big Marab fan, but I think Sean is going to knock him out. In fact, I'll probably put money or down on a finish. I think the only way Sean does beat him is if he knocks him out. So... I, I'll go Sean by, by a KO. I want, I'm wondering what the odds are on that. If there isn't a yet, probably not. Yeah, I'd go with that. And then maybe we can see talking about a Taporia fight, but I feel, still feel like it's a little bit too soon. Sean is better than I'd like to admit this whole time. Are you, Str are you on Strickland or are you talking about O'Malley, bro? Predictions for Shavkat, JDM. Oh, it's got to be Shavkat. And I like JDM, but he just doesn't have the power to put Shavkat away. And Shavkat's chin is iron. If, for me, if Jeff Neal couldn't put him away, I don't see Shavkat, uh, JDM doing it. I think Shavkat could just drown him, personally. Stylistically, it just makes sense for, for Shavkat for that win. I don't think Shavkat would, would beat Leon, though. Prime Aspinall, Prime Kane, go Aspinall. Kane's great, and Prime Kane was a killer, but I'd still go Prime Aspinall. Aspinall's in his prime now. I'd have to go, maybe even not, maybe a year or two off his prime. I'd, and I'd still go Aspinall. If it's just, I think modern MMA just, obviously it wasn't that long ago. But for heavyweights, I think the game's evolved a lot more. Aspinall just is a completely different era now. I'd have to go Tom. Both Sean's now that I think about it. Bet, yeah, that's true. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, no, Amani is always very good, man. I, I don't think anyone who said the Aljo Sterling was, Aljo Sterling fight was like a sort of fluke or a lucky Form is no way. And that, that Vera fight proved that, that Cheeto is not anywhere near his level, man. It was a punching bag for 25 minutes. It was it was a brilliant performance. One of the best. We said this earlier, actually, as one of the best performances in history. And I said it's not recency bias to say that. And it really isn't. JDM is elite submission defense. Yeah, there's one thing about elite submission defense. But if you're getting wrestle fucked for 15 minutes, then it doesn't matter. Boxing is elite. He outstrikes him a chip. Nah, he won't chin Shavka. Shavkat's chin is just too good right now. It will crack eventually. It will. As will someone like Holloway's, but it's not going to at this time, let's be real. Yeah, his boxing is good, but, you know, he doesn't He doesn't have the power. He doesn't have the power. I think Shavkat has the, Shavkat has the reach, obviously. He can just overwhelm him. JDM, the Aussie can't be him, be a boyfriend. Yeah, Rocky can beat Shavkat. Yeah, I do think, I think Leon's much more multifaceted than JDM. He's also a similar frame. Very tall and, and long sort of build, which will lend success. I think he's a much better striker than JDM, and he's a better striker than Shavkat by a mile. 
And I don't think he'd be able to out wrestle Leon either. Leon's we've seen Leon's fought the two best wrestlers in the division, and he's been able to even when he's got taken down, he's been able to get up pretty easily. So for me, I don't think I don't think there's a I'd be surprised if Leon wasn't a favorite in that fight. I really would. One of the beings that changed lives, yeah, man. CTE speed run for Chio, bro. But that's the sacrifices these guys make, man. Favoritism much? I don't think that's favoritism at all. I think it's a pretty fair shout to say Leon. Leon Shafkat's probably his hardest fight in that division. I'm not going to say otherwise. I still think Leon would beat him, though. I think in the different areas of MMA, Leon is better at it than better at all of them than Shafkat is. Sanko can beat Shavkat according to the comments about him. <laughs> yeah. That whole thing's so weird, man. Toughest test for Islam? I mean, over like in a fight that could actually happen, I'd go Leon as well. Yeah, I agree, Ariane. I mean, I'd say for both. I think it's the toughest challenge for both guys. I think that's the most high-level matchup in MMA you can make right now. I hope it happens. I'm sure it actually probably will, which I'm very excited for because I think Leon will make short work of Bilal whenever that happens. And I think we'll get Islam defending his belt um, whenever he defends his belt. And then you'll, I think after that, they'll do the uh, the super fight. I think it's generally, I think that is the toughest test for both guys is each other. Because they're, de they're so much better than everyone else in their division, in my opinion. I think that's, I think that's facts, man. I can't lie. I, don't, I think I'm spitting facts there. Leon never, never faced a mountain wrestler though. Yeah, exactly. But that's why it's his hardest test. Because he's faced Usman and Colby, which is a different sort of style of wrestling. But it has, it's not that sort of oppressive way that the Dagestanis do it. And that's why I think it's his toughest test. Sarukian as well is a good shout, yeah. But I think it's, I think Leon's definitely a harder one, purely because of the size difference. It really, Honestly. But Arman is a good shout as well. I think Arman could definitely beat him. Just want to see Bilal get tucked in. <laughs> yeah, I like him, but he doesn't do himself any favors. I think Leon would put him away. Buckley in the MMA hour. Yeah, stirring the pot a little bit too much. Ariel's just doing his job. He's saying his Instagram, Helwani's just asking questions like a proper journalist should. Like 90% of the journalists who work in and get opportunities in the UFC don't do because they know if they say some shit, they're going to get absolutely bodied. So that's the problem with journalism in MMA. It sucks. Bar guys like Ariel. But that's why Dana White hates Ariel for a reason. Because he asks the tough questions that no one else will. You know, all the all the journalists in the press conference just ask the same questions about how this fight goes and that. Like, never anything actually relevant. You know, what, never any pressing questions, man. It's all just cookie cut shit. And that's the way it is. Yeah, you think Sarukin as well? A lightweight, I'd agree, yeah. But I think overall you have to see Leon. Everyone at the same power and chin, rank the top 10 of welterweight. Everyone keeps their skills and size. I mean, I give you the best. Let me get the rankings up. Let's have a look, shall we? Everyone has the same power in chin. But it's, just, it's a. I mean, skill-wise, again, I say Leon is probably the highest skill level there. You know, Shavkat would be lower because his chin carries him far in this game, to be honest. He leaves his chin out like crazy. So I'd put him lower. Usman's a good shout for up there. He's very well-rounded. you just got to think of the guys who are the most well-rounded. So weirdly, guys like Gilbert Burns, I'd put a lot higher because his chin isn't very good. But he's a great, he's very well-rounded. I can't speak too much on Gary because you haven't seen him against a proper wrestler. I don't know, man. It's, there's a lot of, you could put them anywhere, really. It's hard to say. Who the fuck is this guy? I don't know, bro. You're, you're in my stream. <laughs> Listen, it's all love, man. We're, we're, we ain't here for, for beef. But, you know, if you want to get angry with it, we can do that. I don't much care. Leon's takedown defense was way better than I thought. Yeah, I mean, the Usman fight was a clear indicator of that. The third one in particular. The reason it's in the, it wasn't good in the second one was because he was gassed out because it was at high altitude in Salt Lake. So that's why I made money twice because I knew that was the case. And lo and behold, in the rematch in London, he looked a completely different fighter. So much of a weasel Ariel is, I have to agree with you. I don't think Ariel is a weasel, man. He just does his job as he should be doing. He's a journalist. Dana hates Ariel because he leaked Brock Lesnar fighting on 200. Yeah, doing his job, man. It's so stupid. He should never have been banned from the UFC for that. He was doing his job. I want beef. <laughs> I'm up for it. Fuck it. Am I froze? No, I hope not. Where would you put Francis in the all-time best list in the heavyweight division? I mean, he only defended his belt once, so I can't put him too high. In terms of raw ability, he's up there. He's for sure. But no, I wouldn't put him up near the top. Gary Colby's the fight to make. Love to see that as the co-made of McGregor Chandler. We could have the greatest press conference of all time. That would be very entertaining. And I'm sure we'll see something like that in the future. 
You don't leak firing for like that. I mean, you, you only say that, but loads of journalists have done that recently. You know, saying being the first to report fights being made before it's been officially announced. That's how most fights get announced. You hear it through a journalist or something. They only cared because Dana doesn't like Ariel, for one, and because it was UFC 200 and it was Brock Lesnar. Like, it weren't, it, that, that's why Dana was getting mad about it. He did his job. What do you think of the Weasel, the YouTube channel? I don't watch him, but yeah, he, he like, he, he's been one of the OGs of the game, man. He's been around for a long time, so credit to him. And he's doing well. Fair play to him. Yeah, I, I ain't got nothing bad to say about Weasel. I know Guru doesn't like him for some fucking reason. Again, I don't really care, but... I mean, the one thing I did see was MMA Guru talking about how he has nothing left in his life except from MMA and just sitting there. I don't know how much of that is him playing up to the camera, but if that is true, that is kind of sad. I feel like you need balance in your life, man. Anything that Beast is getting put in a naked triangle on bottom guard? I mean, I could agree with the triangle bit, uh, but not the naked part. <laughs> Definitely, though. That is my... Honestly, I reckon, out of all the submissions I've ever pulled off in sparring, I'd probably say... About seventy percent of them are triangles, <laughs> from from whatever position, from mount or, or, or from guard. I, they're probably triangles. Inverted mount, invert from it, yeah, inverted or mounted or from my gut, off my back. Probably triangles. I fucking love them. See any journal leak that Aldo was coming back? No, off the top of my head. But there was a fight recently that just got announced. I can't think of the top of my head, but it happens all the time. It's not something that's abnormal. His resume is impressive, if not more impressive than Steve Hayes. Who in Garnus? Yeah, to be fair, it's a good point. Nah, but I don't think you can say that he's a bet. He is better on the list because Steve Hayes defended his belt four times, obviously in two different reigns. But stands by it. And you, when you desire, Ariane, am I missing something? My biggest question is: Guru racist to the full mental breakdown about a black man when he did he? I don't know. I don't listen. I he's a smart guy because he plays into the role, doesn't he? And that's why you got people talking about him and he does the numbers. You know, he's he's smart guy. But I, I personally I worry about that guy because I don't know personally, I don't know how you can stream every day for like three, four hours every single day more. And and, that's, and not including the, the times you're doing watch alongs. That's that is for me is the most soul crushing thing you could do. We actually said that, I pretty much said that word for word on the podcast the other day. It's such a crazy thing to do. Like I like streaming and I like talking to you guys, but I have to spread it out because it is is it takes a lot of social energy and there's i don't think there's anything wrong in saying that because it does and i do enjoy doing it but you have to you have to spread it out otherwise you end up burning out like crazy that's what i did at the start i when you guys first watched me first streams i started doing i was streaming every day for like three weeks and i completely went off the deep end and then didn't stream for like two months because i just did not want to do it um and now i've got it down to a nice regiment the sweet sydney sweeney train shit too. i bet you fucking hope don't you irish versus american Chandler versus McGregor, Gary Colby, Pimblet versus Green or Turner. I mean, Paddy's not Irish, he's Scouse. <laughs> but he's English, but they say Scouse. No, journal leaked out, I was coming back. Yeah, you're talking about one specific example, though. You're speaking about one specific example, bro. There's, there's loads. He's doing his job. I mean, listen, I, I've, got no, I've got no bones to pick with Ariel. He definitely plays into it sometimes, as I said, but I don't think he means any ill intent, you know? Yeah, no, I know what you mean. No, I like it, though, Sophie. I like it, bro. That's a good card right there. I feel like you have to have Pimbler and McGregor on the same card. I feel like it just makes sense. Really, it does. I like that. I'm there for that, man. Oh, that's a good card. I mean... who? Do you, I mean, Paddy against Green or Turner. Yeah, I think Paddy versus Turner is a tough one for him, though. He's got very good jujitsu. I could actually see him subbing Turner, weirdly. I know that sounds mental. Could happen, though. Can we get a Scouse accent? How are we, lad? Want some chicken, lad? Gerard Sliff cost us the title, lad. What's happening, lad? Paddy to fight McConnell. Yeah, that seems to be the fight everyone's talking about. I know Paddy mentioned it as well. I, I like that. That's entertaining on the mic, I'll put it that way. And it's actually a really interesting grappling match, too. Very, both very, very good grapplers. Other than Aero leaking, Brock was coming back. Which other returning news did a journal leak since there were loads? What do you mean, did a journal leak? Bro, it just gets reported by journals before the UFC announce it. That's what happens all the time. Like, all the time. <laughs> I, I can't think of it until my head, but loads. It happens pretty much every time there's a pay-per-view. That's the reason I can't think of one specifically, is because there's, it happens, it's just a normal thing. Khan got the early knockout versus Aldo. How do you think the fight goes? Probably the same way, man. And I'm a big Aldo fan.
Moicano is the best post-fight press conferences ever. He is entertaining. I'll say that. Why does a non-champ want to fight Connor if you're not getting any pay-per-view? Yeah, I, I was thinking about this the other day. You know, everyone was talking about this sort of red panty night, but you only get it if you're a champ. So only Dos Anjos would have got it, and Alvarez got it. Alvarez and Aldo got, but were the only recipients of it, if you want to go that far. I think Poirier probably got a nice boost. I know he didn't get, like, a, he didn't have a champ bonus or anything, but I think he definitely got some extra sweeteners, because I think he did talk about that. Maybe I'm wrong. But I know Cerrone definitely didn't. He came out and said it. Moicano can't sub Turner, but Paddy can. I think Moicano's a better grappler than Turner. Racism, bro. Shut up. Trying to leak in the return of a fighter. Not general or fight announcements. I don't know. I, I don't think it's that much different, mate. Like, what's wrong with that anyway? He's doing his job. <laughs> it's, he's a journalist. That's what he's supposed to be doing. That's what happens everywhere else in sport, in the news, in everything. That's what a journalist's job is. <laughs> like, sure. It's just Dana White getting mad because he doesn't like Ariel. I don't think there's anything more than that. Fires themselves, talk about their next fight, and the journalists report on that. Yeah, maybe. It's not always like that. I, I don't know why you care so much. I, you're probably just baiting me and I'm falling for it, but I, I don't know why you hate Ariel that much. Yeah, sure, he's a bit annoying sometimes, but I like him. I think he's doing his job, and he's he's the GOAT of, of my journalism, man. He's the OG. He's been doing it for a long time. You see, wanted to be a big surprise. Well, of course they did, and that's why Dana White was mad about it. But that's tough, isn't it? It's a celebration when you sign to fight me. Oh, yeah. Fucking. Did Nate get a bonus? No, I don't think so. Nate probably got paid what he normally gets paid. <laughs> no, every other journal knew Brock was coming back. I don't know if that's true. Eric decided to report it early for some reason. Glad he got punished for that. I don't know, man. I don't know what you got against Eric Hardy. You need people like him in this sport. You just do. You just do. <laughs> because, you know, otherwise, as I said, you're just going to get cookie cut questions in, in all the time from the same guys. I do that John Morgan, like fair play, he's earning a paycheck and he's earning a living and he's just doing his shit and he's well known. But he, you're not going to see John Morgan asking any pressing questions in the press conferences, are you? You're not going to see him pushing the boat and asking questions that actually make you think and make some people uncomfortable like good journalists do because they're not. They're just there because Dana White knows they're going to ask the same safe questions every time and just keep the ball rolling. They ain't going to press the occasion like Ariel Hawani would. That's why Ariel's not there anymore. <laughs> like that's that's it that's it that's why some people find guys like Errol Hani annoying because they ask the uncomfortable questions that's it well I'll answer a few more then I'm gonna jump off I'm gonna get a little bit more editing done and then I'm gonna chill out for the rest of the evening but listen I mean you can go back and forth on that all the time it's okay to not like Errol Hawani. I don't really watch his show too much I, obviously I see the fighter clips sometimes but I like what he does I have respect for it Jonas for sure knew that Brock was coming back. They had to prepare promotional articles and other media, so when they're given the green light, they're post pretty much at once. Yeah, I don't know too much, to be honest. I don't know. Nate was almost immortalized like Conor Wynn. He didn't care about money. Yeah, I mean, that's also another point, to be fair. The publicity you get from fighting McGregor is in itself quite a big thing. Like, Poirier is a perfect example. That elevated him massively, because those two Conor fights. Well, three, technically. People say, I talk and I talk and I talk, but guess what? I fucking back it up, indeed. Well, not anymore, he doesn't. Pictures of Izzy Pereira 3. Mate, that fight was on a coin toss. They're so, so matched up well. I'd go Izzy because Pereira's getting on a bit now. And if it's a middleweight, yeah, I'd go Izzy. I'd go Izzy. I think Izzy would chin him again. Jonas knew Pereira just blurted it out when he wasn't given the green light. You don't do that. Ah, uh, maybe not. I don't know. I don't care too much, bro. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna waste my energy on it. It's not fucking, listen, it was fucking ages ago. It was in 2016, bro. Light heavyweight Pereira is too big for him. Oh, in light heavyweight. Are you saying versus Adesanya? Yeah, I think so. Didn't elevate him. Why is he nobody outside the top 10? Why did he fight a nobody outside the top 10? What are you talking about? Well, because he lost his last fight. And they pushed Anthony high. You've got to defend your spot. That's what he said. It ain't about the notoriety when you're, in, when you're just trying to fight out the rankings, bro. Obviously, it helps you as a, in the long run, but if you're going to get that fight, you've got to take it, bro. That's it. Like, it's... I don't, that, I don't think that's anything to do with it. Poirier is one of the biggest names in the sport because he fought McGregor. Obviously, he was well-known before that, but fighting McGregor twice and beating him brought his name out massively into the casual fan base. 100%. 100%. 
So there's 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 both sides to that. You know, it's getting money, obviously, if you're a champ, but it's the publicity as well. And Garner Aspinall, I mean, obviously, I'd say Aspinall, but if he gets caught, he gets caught. And that's the same with anyone who fights Ngannou. I think Aspinall would probably submit him, but it's a tough one because Ngannou is Francis Ngannou, and <laughs> you put him against anyone and he can knock him out, so... But Aspinall's got a good chin, man. That Pavlovich, obviously, it's not the same, but that shot he took from Pavlovich, and he hit, eats that left hand, he ate that well, man, and he was chilling. McGregor has the coldest trash talk ever. Not anymore. His one against Poirier in the third fight was terrible. Hey, Errol, but we need people to hate you. <laughs> that's, that's, that's true. Poirier had a lot to do with 299 selling. Well, of course he did. Absolutely. Exactly, Joshua. Massive weasel. Nah. He ain't, man. Come on. Listen, without Ariel, we wouldn't have a lot of things in the sport. Like, I know that sounds a bit hyperbolic, but the, the sport's in a better place because of people like Ariel Helwani and the people he's inspired to do and in, go into those fields. Because Helwani really paved the way for mainstream MMA journalism. So, you know, I think he's, he's a positive part of the sport. But I don't think that's crazy. And I'll, I'll leave you guys with that because I am going to have to jump off. Ignore your comment. It didn't come through, bro. It didn't come through. Um... Ugh. All right. Well, what would you have to say? You can type it out with less censoring or whatever you said. I don't know. Whatever you said, it didn't go through. Mm. What wouldn't we have the DDP race paying? Oh, it's just such a nothing burger, bro. <laughs> it's a nothing burger, bro. Have a great rest of your day and good night. Yeah, appreciate you, Ariane. You too as well. Pete, Israel, Josh, appreciate you guys. I drink proper 12. Incredible, Avon. There you go. Naked triangle. Yeah, not happening, my friend. Not happening. <laughs> Listen, if 800K, I'll do it. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I appreciate the love, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you Sunday. Should be Sunday. Have a good morning, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you're at in the world. I hope you're having a good one. Hope your week's good. And uh, yeah. I will uh I'll see you then. Same time. <laughs>